Microsoft Project 2013. My name's Guy Vaccaro. Just what is a project? If we take out the word Microsoft, what is the word project and how can Microsoft Project 2013 help me with that project planning? Well, when you're creating a project plan as such, there are a number of stages. Step one, which doesn't involve Microsoft Project 2013, is the scoping element. That's where you do all the research, deciding what needs doing and why it needs doing, and some of the plan of how you're going to do that. This then moves us forward into step two, which is the schedule. This is where you then put pen to paper and start to build an actual plan. At this stage, Microsoft Project 2013 will be able to help you. Once you've built the schedule and resourced your project, we then look at starting to execute the plan. So this is to actually carry out that planning, carry out the project, carry out whatever you're trying to do. During that execution, you will monitor the progress and inevitably reschedule steps of your project. No project ever goes to plan. So these bottom three boxes, step three, four, and five, are effectively a loop that will keep continuing until you get to the end of the project. Now, what you're able to do in Microsoft Project 2013 is to keep an eye on the baseline, that's this blue dotted line, and effectively measure yourself against that point. So we go through step one without Microsoft Project, we then build the project using step two, the actual schedule. We then effectively snapshot the schedule at that stage and then go through the execution, monitoring, rescheduling and keep an eye on measuring ourselves back to where we said we would be to see how far we've slipped. So we have a continual loop at the bottom until the project is complete. So the scoping stage, the stage where it all starts, is effectively where you set out what you want to do. So you speak to all interested parties, any clients, any agents, any government agencies that are required to try and figure out what the aims and the goals of your project might be. We then move into the schedule section, and this is how are you going to achieve the goals that you just agreed in the scoping section. How much is each of the tasks and phases, and therefore the whole project going to cost you? So we're looking at resourcing there. How long will each task, each phase, and therefore the whole project take? So that's planning each of the tasks. And then who or what and how much of anything is to be required. So we can look at the costing side. Now in Microsoft Project 2013, we have a number of tables for data entry. These tables pretty much mimic Excel. So as far as getting up to speed and being able to use the software is concerned, most people will hit the ground running. There is a Gantt chart for timescale review, which is built by itself. And we've got a little screenshot there. You don't actually build the Gantt chart. It builds itself from the data you enter in the data entry tables. Very much task orientated. So we enter the tasks. Each task has a duration and then eventually each task has a resource. So every project has to be made up of tasks. How minute and detailed those tasks are is certainly down to yourself as the project manager. Now the tasks themselves can be automatic schedule tasks or manually schedule tasks. If you go down the manually schedule task route, then you effectively do more of the planning yourself. Choosing automatic schedule tasks, then Microsoft Project will give you a hand. It will look at each task's duration, the resources available, and the dependencies of that task on other tasks to decide when it can be carried out. Now tasks have different types. You can have summary tasks that summarize a section of other tasks. We have subtasks, which are each of the individual steps within a summary task section. We have milestone tasks, which are simply that, a milestone task. So it's just a point in time to say, this is the end of a section, it's a milestone. We've reached this section end. And then there is the project summary task, so an overall task to look at the whole project. The calendar in Microsoft Project 2013 has a number of pre-built defaults. The main one of those is that everybody on your project works five days a week, Monday to Friday. They work eight hours per day. They work in the morning from eight till 12. They then have an hour's lunch and work from one till five. Now these are the predefined defaults, but they are changeable and you can make those changes through the software. No weekend working is included in the calendar. Obviously, we can add that. 
and none of the bank holidays are included either. Now that is an important item to remember to add into your calendars, all the public holidays that effectively could make a difference to how long your project will take. We then need to look at resourcing all of your tasks and the schedule you've just built. Now resources are broken down into work resources, which can include things like personnel, facilities, equipment, anything really that uses money on a time basis is the nutshell for a work resource. There are then material resources, which can be fixed or variable, but effectively a material resource uses money on a per item basis, whatever that item may be. And then you have a third and final type, which is just straightforward cost resource, which has a price per task. And that price can differ for each task. So it's not set per time unit and it's not set per physical unit. It's just a cost per task that you can attach and therefore build up the costs for the whole project. Once you have your resources entered into the system, we then need to allocate them to your tasks. And that's where Microsoft Project will do a lot of the calculations for you. So you assign your work and material resources, any conflicts that then arise. Now there will be no conflicts with material resources because the assumption for material resources is that they are infinite. But work resources could conflict in that you're trying to use the same person or number of people at the same time. So those conflicts would need to be resolved. And if there's an over allocation, that over allocation resolves too. Now, when it comes to resolving over allocation, Microsoft Project can help out. Once you have all your conflicts resolved, you'd then be able to produce the final costings for the project. Once the project is underway, we can use the same file. So Microsoft Project 2013 can be used to then monitor your progression through the project by firstly saving a baseline. The baseline effectively is a snapshot at a moment in time that says this is our plan. And this is the plan we want to measure ourselves against. We can then add in task progress as it occurs and track ourselves against that baseline at all times. There are a number of pre-built reports and you can even build your own reports now to help monitor that progression. And inevitably, you will need to reschedule as you go. The weather may affect whatever you're trying to do. The time of year may affect it. Lots of factors come into play once you start running your project and you then need to reschedule. Once the project is complete, as they all are eventually, we can then produce a number of reports to effectively summarize what you've done. We can pay all the bills, sign off the project, and then start another, so that you're ready to roll on another project. So project planning is a cyclical basis, right from the scoping right to the end, and then you start again scoping on another project unless you happen to have a number of projects on the go at the same time. Now, the project that we are looking at throughout pretty much most of the lessons is a bedroom project that is looking to take a bedroom that looks appallingly like that and turns it into something much more like that. Good luck with the project and good luck with this title.